Hello. Uh, today is St Dunstan's Day, a uh, very um, Anglican saint, if you like, very much in the Anglo-Saxon uh, Chronicle of Saints. Uh, he served um, at least under four or five kings, um, very well thought of by King Edmund and by King Edred. <clears throat> but it was under King Edwig that uh, he fell out of favour because... Uh, well, why did he fall out of favour? Reason being, he was a stickler for doing the, the work of God properly. Uh, he, he was a monk and he became Archbishop of Canterbury. And he was a very firm Archbishop of Canterbury, someone who made sure that the Christian faith was dealt with properly. If uh, there were any priests under his ch under his charge who were behaving badly, who were living a dissolute life, who were not li living up to the vocation wherewith they were called, um, he would remove them and replace them with monks. The reason being that he saw monks as being the uh, those who lived under a greater deal of, of discipline, those in the secular world. Um, and Edwig was a very dissolute king. He was too fond of the wine, women and song. And he basically uh, forced St Dunstan to go into exile. And that's where he remained until uh, Edwig died. And then Edgar came to the throne and King Edgar uh, called him back and set him to work again. Um, there are a couple of rather fun things about Edgar. We've heard about the, um, his uh, firmness. There's a little legend, and there's a legend that's actually mentioned in uh, Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, um, when the devil tried to tempt um, St Dunstan. St Dunstan was in a, with a, was in a smithy at the time, um, and uh, with red hot, red hot tools, and and the brazier and things like that, as and shoeing horses, etc., etc. And the devil came in dressed as a as a voluptuous woman to try and tempt him out of his saintly ways. But Saint Dunstan is said to have um, spied a cloven hoof appearing from under her skirts, and so taking a pair of hot tongs from out of the brazier, um, grabbing the devil by the nose. I held him there until, he, until uh, the devil uh, begged him to be let go again. So uh, this is uh, one of the more fanciful le legends. Is it true? Who knows? But that's uh, St Dunstan. St Dunstan is clearly in England a, a force for doing things as the church has always done them. A strictness of life, that we're not to take this life um, as a life of luxury, to lay back and rest. And, in, and while, we, while we, in, we are to enjoy life, enjoying life is not the meaning of life. And for St Dunstan there is only one meaning of life, that is to get return to the God from which we have from which we have fallen, from whom we have fallen. And for that he is exiled, for that strictness, for that desiring that his priests should do as they are told, that, they are, that his priests are men under authority as well. Which is how the church is bound together. It's bound together by mutual obedience. There have been many times um, I've seen where a church has been disrupted because someone wants to pursue their own way. Indeed, I was um, involved in a discussion whereby uh, anyone, uh, a woman, uh, uh, um, basically stated that anyone who opposed the ordination of women was a heretic. And I asked her which heresy, and she said, Donatism. And I said, hang on a minute, um, Donatism, that's, that's the heresy 
where you say that the sin of the priest affects the sacrament he confects. Are you saying being a woman is sinful? She said, no, of course not. What I'm saying is that, she said, uh, being a... Uh, uh, the Donatism is saying that if a priest is defective in some way, he, uh, uh, his, his sacraments are invalid. Well, I said, well, that's, there's something wrong with that. You can't say that. Because defective in some way is not the, the, his, the history of the thing. It's not the history of Donatism. You're changing the rules so that you can apply them in the way that you want them. You weren't trying to force people out. Indeed she was. So, we have to be, there are times we have to be strict. There are times we have to be lenient as well. I've said before that the, the body of Christ is a human body, and human bodies are, have both skeletons and muscles and flesh. And flesh is soft and yielding and warm. But bones give structure. The church needs to have both bones and flesh. It needs to be pastoral as well as being firm. The church has no authority to change the sacraments. It has no, no authority to change the truth. But on the other hand, it is not a church in which um, people are to be demonised and that sinners are to be comforted as well as... Um, Assist, uh, helped to, to repent. So, St Dunstan knew this, and that's why he was rigid with the priests, because it, he, know, he knows very well that the priests are the people who need to be giving that structure to the lives of people who, without Christian religion, would be lost. They would be struggling to find their way in life. So priests must live a life of, of strictness in many ways. Of course we are fallen human beings as well. Of course we fall. And it's when we do fall that's a that's a, a, a big deal, and we can see that in a lot of the abuse scandals in the church. And that's why we have to come down like a ton of bricks on abusive priests. The Lord himself came down like a millstone on those who, who gave his little ones, who offended his little ones. So... We have to be the priests have to be strict, they have to obey bishops, and bishops have to be good pastors because they are going to be held into account for every single soul under their charge. And St Dunstan knows this. And St Dunstan wants his Christian religion to flourish, that people might be saved, that people might find health in the church and may grow and become the people that God wants them to be and that they may be happy. So, God bless you. God bless you that you may find in your life priests whom you can rely will give you what you need to live a good Christian life. God bless you if you are a priest and are faced with the strictness of your, your calling and struggle with it. God bless you that as a, as a church we may come together in the worship of the Lord Jesus Christ and, and with him and in him and through him put to flight the works of evil. God bless you. Please pray for me.